The so-called stylish layout is a delightful new addition designed for a certain class of person. It is most perfectly suited to persons unfamiliar with fighting games, persons incapable of performing combos, and infants. I will now explain the stylish layout, with particular focus on how it compares to the technical layout. I shall do my best to use small words, in hopes that some of this information may permeate that echoing cavern you consider your mind. The buttons, as they are utilized in stylish layout, are as follows. The normal button. The heavy button. The special button. And the throw button. The normal button will allow you to perform quick attacks when you wish to pressure your opponents. It frequently corresponds to the A or B buttons in the technical layout. The heavy button will perform heavier attacks or attacks with special properties. It frequently corresponds to the C or D buttons in the technical layout. Pressing the normal or heavy button repeatedly will allow you to perform a combo. My, technology makes life so easy nowadays. One may also perform variations on said combos by pressing the heavy button immediately after pressing the normal button. One might also choose to press the special button following the pressing of the normal button, which will add a special attack into one's combo. As you may have already gathered, the special button can be utilized to perform special attack moves. Combining your presses of the special button with different directional inputs will allow you to execute various special attacks. Ah, oh, yes. Certain follow-up special attacks can be performed by pressing the special, normal, or heavy button after the first special attack has been executed. I encourage you to attempt this on your own, futile as your clumsy fumbling may be. If you are fortunate enough to fill your heat gauge halfway, I do recommend holding down the normal or heavy button. This will trigger an especially powerful special attack known as a distortion drive. If you are feeling especially extravagant, hold down both the normal and heavy buttons. This will activate your astral heat attack, which will utterly destroy your enemy if it connects. To be quite honest, the visual spectacle of an astral heat itself is worth the execution of one. However, there are certain conditions one must meet in order to activate an Astral Heat. They are as follows. You need only win a single round more to win the match. Your opponent's health must be below 35%. Your heat gauge is at 100%. All three conditions are required, or you shall find yourself once again stymied by your own inadequacy. At long last, we reach the Throw button. The Throw button allows one to use a Throw Attack move. Pressing the throw button whilst holding the back direction will throw the opponent backward. If any other direction is held, it will throw the opponent forward. You may also use the throw button in mid-air to throw your opponent whilst you are both in the air. Of course, your opponents can and will attempt to throw you as well. When they do so, press the throw button. If you can manage the intricate timing, you will achieve what is known incomprehensibly as a throw escape. There. I do believe that covers the basics rather nicely. Perhaps you have found it a touch boring? Rest assured that I feel much the same way in regard to you. As such, I believe it is high time this particular vignette came to an end. Instructor, Rachel Alacard. You may refer to me as Master, Your Worship, or Mistress, if you are feeling courageous. All of the instructions in this tutorial assume that your character is facing to the right. Should you forget this simple fact, your failure will be absolute and your punishment will be severe. One last note. This tutorial assumes you are using the technical layout. Please do remember this. I despise repeating myself. Now I shall explain the basic rules of Blaze Blue. Please do pay attention. 
Blaze Blue is a 2D fighting game wherein two players compete against one another by predicting their opponent's actions. Reflexes, judgment, and execution will be put to the test. Command your character to attack your opponent or defend against their attacks. The first player to reduce the other's health to zero takes the round. The player who wins the required number of rounds takes the match. Now, if you would be so kind to look at the screen, you shall see that near the top, in the center, are two numbers. These are a countdown timer and represent the time limit for a round. In a standard game, this timer will be at 99 when the round begins and will count down from there. The two green bars located on either side of the countdown timer represent the HP remaining for each character. On the left you will find player 1 and on the right, player 2. As mentioned previously, the first to reduce their opponent's health to zero wins the round. There are, however, exceptions. If neither player can succeed in reducing their opponent to an inert mass of flesh and misery, the player who retains the greatest amount of health when the timer finishes its march towards zero will be declared the winner. You may also find yourself in a draw, wherein both parties have exactly the same amount of health remaining when the match ends, or a double down, wherein both you and your opponent are reduced to zero health at the same time. If either of these should occur, you will both win the round. Ah, oh, yes, of course. If one player is a single round away from winning a match and a double down or draw occurs, only the player with fewer wins will gain one. This happens only rarely, as double downs and draws are not common, but you would do well to remember it. I believe that explains the basic rules rather nicely. Now, let us discuss character control. I confess I'm rather fond of this section. Excellent! There are many ways to move in Blaze Blue, but let's practice the most basic of movements. Walking forward, walking backward, and crouching. These skills will be invaluable once it comes time to maneuver your character around your opponent. Do find a way to imprint them on that hideous, rotten excuse for a mind. We shall begin with walking forward. Push forward to move toward the sweaty gentleman. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! My goodness, perhaps you possess some elementary motor control after all. Shall we try walking backward now? Push backward to move your character away. Pushing backward will also allow you to guard against attacks while standing. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Good heavens, your skill is nothing short of astounding. I think I may faint. Lastly, let us try crouching. Push down, down backward, or down front. I recommend that you press down and back to crouch. In this way, you will guard as you crouch. A person such as yourself, for whom even breathing is an ordeal, should understand the value in this economy of movement. What are you waiting for? On your knees! Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Now, it is high time we discussed the dash. This will allow you to quickly close the distance between you and your opponent. Tap forward twice, quickly, whilst you are on the ground. If you can manage that, you should dash forward. If you hold forward the second time you press it, you will continue to dash in that direction. Now, perhaps you should try it for yourself. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Our next lesson regards the back step. This is a maneuver which allows your character to travel a short distance backward at high speed. It is best put to use distancing yourself from an opponent. While you are on the ground, press backward twice. 
This should execute a back step. Although I confess I doubt you can manage even so simple a task. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Next, we have the aptly named jump. There are, in fact, a total of three different types of jumps. Forward, vertical, and backward. A forward jump is useful for closing in on one's opponents, while a vertical jump is best put to use avoiding an opponent's attacks. And a backward jump is frequently used to keep one's distance from one's opponents. Push up, up forward, or up backward to perform a vertical jump, forward jump, or backward jump, respectively. Now, let's give it a shot, shall we? Go ahead and try to jump. Do hurry. I'm not doing this because I enjoy it, you know? Three, two, one, action! Whenever you're ready! Excellent! I suppose it would be polite to mention that if one performs a forward jump during a dash, one can move a greater distance forward by utilizing the momentum of the dash. I realize that it is a great deal of information to absorb all at once, but do try and remember it. The double jump is an advanced kind of jump. The double jump is quite useful, allowing you to jump higher than you would be able to with a normal jump. Additionally, it is possible to change directions in mid-air by jumping in a different direction on the second jump. The double jump has myriad uses in advanced maneuvers, such as distancing oneself from one's opponent, or adjusting the timing of one's attacks to confuse one's opponent. I really do encourage you to learn the double jump. I believe you will find it quite useful. I believe that is quite enough instruction. Now, let's give it a try, shall we? Three, two, one, action! Excellent! A high jump is, amazingly, a jump that allows you to jump higher than a normal run-of-the-mill jump. There are three available for your use. Forward, vertical, and backward. The high jump is a move entirely different from the regular jump. Using the two in conjunction with one another opens up a great many possibilities. It also bears mentioning that one can use the double jump move during a high jump as well. To high jump, tap down, then quickly perform the motion for a jump. The jump one performs after tapping down will determine which high jump they execute. Therefore, a vertical jump will beget a vertical high jump, a backward jump, a backward high jump, and so on. If your feeble mind has managed to grasp this concept, then let us attempt a high jump. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! In theory, at least, the aerial dash functions in a similar manner to the double jump, by which I mean that performing the dash movement allows one to dash while in mid-air. Simple enough, yes? Perhaps even simple enough for you. Three, two, one, action! <sighs> what a harsh loser! Lesson clear! Expert use of the double jump, high jump, and aerial dash will allow one to execute a wide variety of mid-air maneuvers. I shall let you in on a small secret. To perform the fastest possible aerial dash, press up forward. Then allow the direction control to return to neutral, and press forward once again. If you hope to ambush your opponent, or simply wish to attack them from many different angles, this move will be indispensable. Alternatively, performing the movement described but backward will allow one to achieve the fastest possible aerial backdash. Let me simply say in passing that the filthy sweaty ninja before us is capable of up to two additional aerial dashes following a jump, or a single aerial dash after a double jump. However, Ragna, I'm afraid that you are only capable of either a double jump or aerial dash when in midair, so please do keep that in mind. I believe that should be sufficient for an overview of basic movement. As a result of my expert tutelage, even a creature such as yourself should now be capable of basic maneuvers. 
I await the day that you will be able to dance with me. Normal attacks are your most basic of moves, but they are nonetheless essential. There are four in total. A weak attack, done with the A button. A medium attack, done with the B button. A strong attack, done with the C button. And a drive, done with the D button. First, we have the weak attack, executed with the A button. It does little damage, yes, but it is quite fast. Three, two, one. Whenever you do, I'm back for more! Excellent! Next, we have the medium attack, controlled by the B button. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Of course, there is also the strong attack, which will happen when you press the C button. It does a good deal of damage, but moves much slower than the other attacks. Three, two, one, action! How can this be? Excellent! At long last, we come to your drive, which requires the use of the D button. Each character's drive is unique. For a more in-depth discussion of drives, please refer to the strategy guidelines for each character that we will discuss later on. Three, two, one, action! Excellent! There, you see? Not terribly difficult. Now you have some idea what each of your attacks looks like, yes? With that out of the way, it is time we discuss high, mid, and low attacks. Let us begin. Each attack has high, mid, and low hit properties. Mid attacks can be blocked while crouching or standing. High attacks can only be blocked while standing. Low attacks can only be blocked when one is crouching. It is terribly important that you learn this. I recommend you begin with normal attacks. Let's give it a shot, shall we? Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Three, two, one, action! Can I get it? Excellent! Three, two, one, action! Excellent! You understand the different sort of attacks and their properties now, yes? Excellent. There is so much more to learn. Now, I believe I shall attempt to explain to you the many different normal attacks one can perform in-game. It is possible to perform many different normal attacks with the same button, depending on what direction is being pressed at the same time. Hmm, perhaps I should put it more simply. A standing attack is performed by pressing one of the attack buttons, accompanied by no directional input. Whilst your character is crouching, you can perform a crouching attack. In addition, most jumping attacks, which are performed in midair, are high attacks. In point of fact, there are many button and direction combinations that can be used to perform low and high attacks. Many high attack moves can be performed by pushing forward and one of the A, B, or C buttons. Pushing down and forward while pressing the C button will always result in a low attack. There are many other low and high attacks, however, that are unique to each character. For instance, Rodna, in your case, you are capable of performing a high attack by making a jumping attack or by pressing forward and B. A low attack move can be performed by pushing down and B, forward and C, or down forward and C. Each character has a number of unique attacks that are performed by combining directional input with button presses. Please do try and remember what sort of attacks your character of choice can utilize in this manner. Now, utilize the directional inputs and try to perform a directional standing attack. Three, two, one, action! I'm back for more! Excellent! How was that? Rather fun, isn't it? Let's move on to drives now. As I mentioned earlier, the characteristics of any particular drive attack vary, 
depending on the character in question. Today we shall focus on your drive attacks, Ragnar. Your drive is aptly titled Soul Eater. Should you hit your opponent with a D attack move, or even if they should block such a move, you will drain their health, slightly restoring your own. As with your normal attacks, your drive has many variations, which can be used by combining it with directional inputs. As you have, I hope, learned already, there are standing, directional, crouching, and jumping attacks. Let's try a few of them, shall we? Now, go ahead and unleash your drive. Three, two, one, action! Terra B! Excellent! Three, two, one, action! This is a new camp! Excellent! Three, two, one, action! Excellent! Three, two, one, action! Whenever you're ready, yeah! I'm back for Excellent. more! Excellent! Proper use of your drive takes a good deal of practice, but mastery is essential for success. For each attack, there is a recovery animation, during which one can do nothing. The revolver action mechanic allows one to perform a normal attack immediately, without waiting for the recovery animation to complete. For instance, if your opponent blocks your standing A attack, you can immediately perform your standing B attack without waiting for the recovery animation for your standing A attack to finish. The act of skipping the delay at the end of an attack is commonly referred to as a cancel. This term will appear many more times throughout this tutorial, so you would do well to remember it. If you are unable to do so, I shall have no choice but to punish you severely. Now, why don't you try it for yourself? First, attempt to hit your opponent with an attack move. Three, two, one, action! Alchemist! Close one! Alchemist B! Excellent! Of course, this can also be used with directional, standing, or crouching attacks, as well as jumping attacks. Additionally, there are some revolver action sequences that can only be accessed when your opponent is hit by an attack. I see that you are struggling to comprehend this concept. Perhaps you are best suited to learning by doing. Three, two, one, action! How can this be? How can this be? I'm back for more! Excellent! The revolver action mechanic is key to building successful combos, as well as applying timely pressure to your opponent. Examine your character's capabilities in this regard with care, as they may mean the difference between glorious victory and humiliating defeat. If your revolver action doesn't register as a continuous combo, I advise you to beware. Opponents may be able to start blocking your attacks in the middle of your barrage, Surely even you can understand that, yes? A throw is a technique that cannot be blocked. Its reach is short, but it is an excellent tool for dealing with opponents who guard themselves perhaps a little too well. Ground throws can be performed in one of two directions, forward or backward. To perform a backward throw, hold backward and press B and C at the same time. To perform a forward throw, do not hold backward and press B and C at the same time. Aerial throws can only go in a single direction. Press B and C at the same time whilst in midair to execute one. To begin with, let us attempt a ground throw. Three, two, one, action! How can this be? Ready? How can this be? This is a new chemist! Excellent! There are two sorts of throws, one that hits your opponent whilst they are not being attacked, and one that hits them when they are. If the exclamation that appears over a character's head is green, the throw hits your opponent whilst they were not being attacked. If the exclamations are purple, however, 
The throw hit whilst they were being attacked. The problem with purple exclamation throws is that it is far easier to escape than the other sword. Still, even if your opponent manages to escape, you are safe from counter-attack. In other words, attempting a throw now and then may pay significant dividends at a relatively low potential cost. Now, attempt to throw whilst your opponent is being attacked. Attack him with a crouching A. When he is hit, attack him with your throw. Three, two, one, action! Uh, ready? Ah! This is a new Kimmy! Excellent! Hmm, acceptable, I suppose. Well, have you got it? I do hope so. I grow rather tired of this. At any rate, once you have successfully thrown your opponent, it is indeed encouraged to follow up using several normal and special attacks. This is especially true if, despite your incompetence, you manage to throw your opponent into the corner. Throws give one the opportunity to inflict massive damage upon one's enemies. It is also possible to taunt one's opponent through the use of the taunt button. This move does leave one vulnerable, however, and therefore its use in most situations would be ill-advised. Even so, it is the perfect tool for teasing certain people, such as Ravna. Of course, make use of it too frequently against human opponents, and you may incite some literal rage. So I recommend you exercise discretion. Ah yes, I do have another tip for you. Once per round, taunting the CPU opponent in arcade mode will fill your heat gauge to 100%. There is no downside. So do feel free to make use of this opportunity when you need it. For now, please taunt the aromatic gentleman over there. Three, two, one, action! Entertain me! <sighs> what a harsh loser this is. Lesson clear! Ma, oh, you've done it. I wouldn't say it's anything to be proud of, though. I'm relatively certain even an ape could handle the task of pressing a single button. I dare say that wraps up the beginning attack move section quite nicely. Be sure to memorize everything I've attempted to teach you, and practice diligently, so that you can use them when they are most needed. It is now time for me to teach you how to guard. Be if you hold backwards when your opponent attacks you, you will perform what is known as a standing guard. A standing guard will block high and mid attacks, but will not, unfortunately, block low attacks, such as down and forward and C. First, why don't you practice the standing guard? Three, two, one, action! What is that? Excellent! Next is the Crouching Guard, which, as you may have guessed, can block mid and low attacks. Now, try the Crouching Guard for yourself. Three, two, one, action! What is that? Excellent! I confess, your reflexes are passable. The final sort of guard is the aerial guard. A wide range of attacks can be... 
Three, two, one, action! What was that? Uh, no, Rick Pratt! Loser! Lesson clear! Is this too much for someone such as yourself to remember? Perhaps you should think of it like this. At any rate, simply remember to press backward when you find yourself in a jam. It may seem simple, but it is of the utmost importance. This one simple rule is, indeed, the very cornerstone of a powerful defense. This completes the attack and defense portion of the tutorial. I do hope you will have the common sense to review this from time to time.